Welcome and good morning to all of you out there. I'm excited that you're joining me as you learn about the power of water today. Today we'll think through the lens of a plants, plant maintenance technician and build our very own prototype of a water wheel. My name is Mrs. Bystrack or Mrs. B and I have the wonderful opportunity of working with students from the Chula Vista Elementary School District. Together we get to learn and explore a variety of topics that are all related to water. Today's live event wouldn't be possible without the continued support of our friends at Sweetwater Authority and Otide Water District. So I just want to give them a quick shout out and thank them for all that they do to supply us with safe and reliable water. Now, during today's event, there are a variety of ways in which you can participate. Today, you're going to build a prototype of a water wheel. We also have my friends Mr. Bruder and Coach Ramirez moderating our Q&A section, so you can leave those appropriate comments, responses, or questions in our Q&A, and they're happy to respond and even possibly share your responses aloud today. Finally, stick around and assess your knowledge as, and join us in our live Kahoot game. Now, check out these items on your screen. There's lots of different pictures here, lots of different items. And I want you to look at these items and I want you to see or see if you can spot any items in these pictures that use electricity. So check out these items. Which ones would you say use electricity? You can share some of those in the Q&A with us. And I also want to know, not only from looking at those images, what are some things that you use every day that need electricity? So some of those, share some of those machines or electronics that you use every day in the Q&A. You might have already spotted some in this picture here. So take a moment in our Q&A, I want to find out what kind of things do you use that use electricity? Now, you're probably wondering why I'm asking about electricity and energy when I usually talk to you about water. Well, did you know that water can work as a source of energy for our communities? Now, how can water help generate electricity or get our electronics working? I wanted to take a moment to learn a little bit about what we call hydropower or hydroelectricity. In a similar way that a wind turbine uses the kinetic energy in wind to produce electrical energy, people can also use the energy in moving water to produce electrical energy. Electricity produced using moving water is called hydroelectricity or hydropower. Hydroelectricity uses the kinetic energy in flowing rivers and streams. The water is often held in large dams which allow people to control the flow of water. When the water in a dam is released, it pushes past generators that convert kinetic energy into electricity. The electricity travels along power lines to power stations, where it is sent along an electrical grid to our homes and cities. Ah, so there we have it. Little background on how we can use water to help generate, create electricity or power for our communities. So in that video, we could see that there was a lot of equipment. You see a dam on your screen right now. There was lots of machinery. You saw generators, turbines, lots of different um, machines or electronics to help um, make these systems work. And it takes a lot of people working together to keep the equipment working. So today we're going to focus on a career where people maintain and fix equipment and this career is called a plant maintenance technician. Now today, as you create your water wheel, you'll be thinking as a plant maintenance technician. A plant maintenance technician is responsible for maintaining and repairing equipment such as pumps, engines, and valves in a plant. So here you can see in the picture some pretty heavy equipment machinery that needs to be maintained and fixed on different during different schedules. So let's find and or see and hear a little bit more about this very hands on exciting career. 
the repairmen are in charge of doing all the maintenance and repairs on all the turbines and generators within the plant, um, which consists of working in the water um, on the turbine side and then also inside on the plant floor working on the generators. How do repairmen, a given week, uh, this time of year, uh, which is early fall, uh, we're just in a swing of overhaul season. So they're in the process of uh, tearing down a turbine and making all the repairs to that turbine that are necessary to make it operable again. Um, that would be this time of year. And then in the summer, we have boom repairs. Um, it's a variety of positions uh, and different jobs throughout the year. A lot of the challenges are, one would be climate, Two would be just um, working in different conditions. Uh, you go from working outside in the sun, then you're down in the hole in the water with your hip waders on. Um, every day is a different, uh, a different thing. So the biggest challenge I think would just be the diversification of what they have to deal with each day. All right, so it sounds like a super important career in terms of keeping machinery and that equipment working so that the whole plant and facility is up and running. Now, a person who enjoys this career might enjoy working with tools, problem solving, and even following set plans to keep all of that equipment working. Now, that makes me think or wonder about some of you out there. Have you ever had to fix something that was broken? So have you ever had to fix something was broken? What was it? What was it that you problem solved and you were able to fix working as a maintenance technician or someone who can problem solve and fix something? So tell us about something that you fixed in the past in the Q&A. I can't wait to hear and see what types of projects you've worked on because I bet there's lots of different things that you have fixed in the past. Now with that, let's just move forward and let's become plant maintenance technicians as we create our water wheels. But before we do that, let's check in with Mr. Bruder and see what type of devices or electronics you use on a daily basis or things that use electricity. So hey, Mr. Bruder, how's it going? It's going great. How about you? Pretty good, pretty good. It's Friday. So what are some things that our friends use out there? I know I can't go a day without using electricity. What are they using out there? Well, Caroline and Kelani and a few others shared computers, which we're probably all on right now. We're all using right now. Yep. Either it's plugged in or it has energy stored in those batteries. Aubrey shared a fan. Santino shared a TV. Nicholas said a vacuum, a clock. Um, Lorelai said a phone or a TV. Stephanie shared a blender. All kinds of different things. Ah, it sounds like everyone's thinking about their morning routine. Maybe someone made a smoothie this morning. They needed some heater or a cool off the room with a fan. So lots of different things out there, right, that we use. We, it's really hard not to have that electricity for all of us. So awesome. Thanks for sharing, Mr. Bruder. So with that, I think we're ready to get into some more information into our engineering design process here. So today we want to see how we can use the power of energy of moving water to make a machine move. So with that, we're going to be building a prototype of a water wheel. Now, here are some wonderings that I had before I got started. Number one, I wanted to know because water wheels involve water, I was wondering what type of materials would be needed if we're going to be using water on this machine. So paper and things like that would just get soaked, so that probably won't be the best type of material. So we're going to have to think of materials that might be more waterproof or water resistant. I also wondered how will water make something move? So how are we going to get that water to be able to make some sort of machine move? And then finally, I was wondering, how much water do you need to make something move? So once you have that device and you're making it work with water, how much of that water do you actually need? Is it a drop? Is it a gallon? Who knows, right? So with that, I wonder what kind of wonderings you have. You're probably asking some questions as well. Now, before we begin to select our materials, let's find out about how water can be used to make machines move, since that was one of my questions. So let's check out how water is used to make machines move at a hydroelectric plant. 
Most hydroelectric stations use either water diverted around the natural drop of a river, such as a waterfall or rapids, or a dam is built across a river to raise the water level and provide the drop needed to create a driving force. Water at the higher level is collected in the forebay. It flows through the plant intake into a pipe called a penstock, which carries it down to a turbine water wheel at the lower water level. The water pressure increases as it flows down the penstock. It is this pressure and flow that drives the turbine that is connected to the generator. Inside the generator is the rotor that is spun by the turbine. Uh, so kind of zeroing in on this last image here from that video, we can see how that pressure and flow of that running water, how it can turn that turbine water wheel to move um, and flow to go to all the other pieces that need to create that energy. So for, the, for me, this was really helpful in getting me to imagine or design my own water wheel. Now for our prototype today, Here's what you will need. So today you're gonna to need two empty plastic bottles. You'll need a pair of scissors. You'll need about 18 inches of tape. You'll need two straws or two pencils. And finally, when you're ready to test, you're gonna need some kind of tub to capture that water, that flowing water, and then maybe putting that in a sink where you can use some running water to help test for your prototype today. So again, two empty plastic water bottles, a pair of scissors, about 18 inches of tape, two straws, two pencils. Now, remember, if you need to gather these materials, you can press pause and then play once you have everything you need. Now, as I was kind of thinking about a plan from the videos I saw, here are some images to show you some other variations of different types of water wheels. So these images, again, helped my mind get my mind thinking about how to make a water wheel out of some everyday materials. So my plan for today is to use water bottles as the wheel. So we're going to connect those water bottles. That's what's going to spin. That'll rotate on those straws, which we are using as an axle today. So those straws are gonna represent our axle. And then we're gonna add some blades or paddles so that the wa running water can um, catch on to that and help spin or generate movement for our water wheel. So with that, let's go ahead and get to it. Well, I'm gonna, as you're getting your materials ready, let me go ahead and get mine set here. So I have my tape. I'm gonna grab my straws here. I have my scissors and I have my two water bottles. So first off, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut off these wrappers here. I'm gonna take these off. Ooh, that's a lot of static electricity right there sticking to me. It will not come off of my hand. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cut off this other one here. Just take that off. While I do that, I'm going to also just remove uh, the caps. I won't need those caps for this project today. Maybe you'll save them. Maybe you'll need them for another one of our engineering design projects. All right, so first thing what I'm going to do, I'm going to just kind of move these to the side. The first thing I want to do is I want to create that axle. Now I'm going to take those two straws. Maybe you have two pencils and I'm just going to put them together. I'm going to cut off a piece of tape here and I'm just going to tape around to connect them so that I have a long enough axle for the wheel that is going to be made from the bottles. Let me just go ahead and tape that together. And there we have our axle. A little hard to see with the white background. I'll just put that to, to the side. Next, what you're going to want to do is find the halfway point for each of your water bottles. And we're just going to go ahead and cut those water bottles in half. So I have some pretty uh, thin plastic here. It might get a little wet since there's still water in there. Let me try to empty that out. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just cut this bottle in half. You might have a thicker bottle, so be careful as you cut it. You might need to kind of jab it in a little. All right, so there's one. Cut in half. Try to this is that I try to make it as straight as you can. There you go. Here's my second one. All right. 
So now I have my water bottles that are cut in half. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to take those two pieces here that have those tops and I'm going to try to just kind of switch one inside the other. And then I'm going to add some tape around it, around it. And that's going to create that wheel. All right. So I kind of squished one inside the other. I'm going to get probably about, I don't know, 12 inches of tape here and just wrap it around. Try to just put it in the center here. You might need some help when you're playing with or working with a long piece of tape. It starts to get stuck on things. Maybe you didn't need that much. Maybe more like seven inches or so. All right. So I have my axle and I have my wheel. And there's one more piece that we said we were going to add to this water wheel or a few more pieces and those are the blades. So you're going to take one of those bottom pieces from your water bottle. And you're going to cut it into some different um, even some even shapes here. Now on the bottom of my water bottle, I can see that there's already lines that are evenly distributed. So I'm just going to use a marker here just to kind of show you that I'm going to make my blades or paddles about an inch thick kind of using the spacing that I see at the bottom here. You can kind of guess, you don't really need to draw this out. I just wanted to kind of show you at the bottom that you can use that as a way to kind of make these nice even paddles. All right, next I'm gonna take my scissors and just go ahead and cut those. So I'm just gonna cut wherever I drew one of those lines. You didn't draw lines, you can kind of see where you can evenly space it out. I have these little notches here, so I did it at every other one just to make my blades a little wider. All right, now it was a little hard to cut all the way down to the bottom. I'm going to kind of spread this open. Now I'm going to cut off this bottom circle so that I have those, I think it was six even blades. I'm just going to go ahead and cut around. Separate those blades. The bottles, water bottles were real wet, so it's getting a little wet right here. Hopefully, it won't impact my tape. All right, so now I have my six blades. So now it's time to take some tape and we're going to try to put those blades on pretty evenly spaced all around our wheel. So I'm actually going to use a different color tape so you can see how I'm putting these. Now I have all these blades kind of spacing in a certain way where the curve is up because I want them to all kind of go in the same direction. So it will help with that flow or pressure of that water. All right, so I'm going to put a piece of tape and add that blade. I mean, might need to straighten that one up a little. And then on the bottom side, I'm actually going to add some more tape just so that it's not so flimsy. That'll add a little bit more support there. All right, so you're going to do this for all of each of your blades. So I'm sure you're working with that tape there. I'm going to go ahead and add my second one. Just going to flip it over, add my next piece of tape. Kind of make sure that's nice and secure. Just move on to the next. You can see as we're making this, it's actually a pretty simple design, but it's been these water wheels have been used for so many years in different ways. Maybe you've seen those older fashioned water wheels that work as a mill or something like that. All right, three more to go. Maybe a friend's helping cut the tape for you as you're adding these to the water wheel. All right. Add my last two here. Oh, 
Hope everyone's doing okay out there. I hope you're tasting on getting all over the place and stuck on different things. Each time I kind of like pull those blades out so you can kind of see how those blades are going to look. All right, and here goes my final one. I'm going to go ahead and add these last two pieces of tape. And my final one. Here we go. Then I'm just going to kind of fluff those blades. You can see how they're now all around um, the bottles, which we're calling our wheel today. So the last thing that we need to add is we need to get something that will hold that wheel and spin, and that's our axle. So I can stick that axle through both ends. I can just kind of use my hands here to kind of show how it can kind of use hand power, but we said this was about hydroelectric, so using water to make the movement. So for testing, what you're gonna need to do is I have a bucket, so I'm going to use this bucket here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this in the center. So when you're ready to test and check out your design or how you made yours and see if it works, you're going to want to make sure your axle gets taped into one place. And that's because when you turn the water on, it probably is going to have that force and pressure. It might move your whole water wheel. So I'm taping the axle down to each end. And so when the water comes and flows, it's going to turn the wheel. Now, I don't have water right here. I don't want to get water onto my device. So I want to show you a completed project that I had completed. I want to show you one of my test runs here. So let me head back to this. All right, let me go ahead and show you what I use or what I did. So I put that bucket under the faucet. And so here is my test of my prototype of a water wheel once I added that flow and pressure of the water. And there we go, no hands. You're not using my hands. You're using that power of water to get that mechanical ener and energy and move that machine, right? So moving that water wheel. I'm going to do it one more time just because just so you can see. Oops, let me go backwards here. I want you to see it one more time in action. Now, as you see my design, I'm sure you've seen lots of different types of water wheels. So what would be some things that you would do to improve your design? Now, these water wheels can be connected to other um, types of equipment or machines. So it could be used to lift something. It could be moved with a gear to turn something. What would you do to improve your design? And also, as you're doing that or thinking about your improvements, which parts of the water wheel do you think would need to be fixed or maintained often? So if you're putting this underwater several times, you know, that water could splash. I'm kind of thinking, hey, with this material here, with our prototype, these paper straws aren't going to last long, right? So there's different things. So as a plant maintenance technician, you might need to think about, oh, do you think these blades need to be changed? Do you... Um, do blades need to be changed? I don't know, there's lots of different things. So what parts of the water wheel do you think would need to be fixed or maintained often? Well, awesome work today. I hope your tests go well. So it's time now to test our knowledge about today's topic. So it's time to join in with our Kahoot. So hopefully you're finishing up with those prototypes. You can probably test them a little bit later because we want you to test your knowledge and join in our Kahoot. So using a separate window or device, go to www.kahoot.it and enter the game pin 2344111. And our moderators are going to add that in the chat right now. Now, as you sign on, let's check back with Mr. Bruder and find out some things that some of you have fixed in the past. So I know we already have some great uh, plant maintenance technicians out there in training because you have that mind to fix things and problem solve. So what are some projects out there that um, some of our students and friends, Mr. Bruder, have been talking about that they've either fixed or worked on out there? There's a lot of them. We have. Oh, nice. Nice. I like that. <laughs> we, 
We have Robert, Maya, and a whole bunch of other people say their phones. Oh, I wonder what they had to do. Usually it's turning it on and off, right? <laughs> That's the first step. Just also, to see what's going like on. The, the connections, like where the chargers connect and things like that. Oh, that's right. Commented. That's right. Uh, so sometimes you have to add tape or something or maintain it, right? You're always checking. Is, are those wires still connected? Because they bend so quickly. Speaking of devices, Aubrey mentioned fixing your iPad. Uriah mentioned an Xbox controller. Luna mentioned a gaming system. We also had uh, Freddie mention a projector. So I'm thinking like a digital projector. OK. Uh, Rafael mentioned a laptop. So lots of lots of electronics, but we also had some other ones like a, someone mentioned a toaster. Oh no, I wonder if the toast got stuck in there or something. Uh, Noah mentioned uh, fixing a car. Ah, nice. So Actually, being able quite to work a few people mentioned fixing a car with family members. Ah, what a great skill to have, right? Knowing how to change things, fix things, instead of having to go pay lots of money to have someone else do it, you can kind of problem solve and figure out those different things that can be done. We also had, uh, let's see, oh my gosh, there's so many of them. Damien shared about fixing a virtual reality device, so I'm thinking probably one of those headsets. Like the headsets? Yep. A lot of it's troubleshooting, right? If something's not working, where you plug something in, take it out, put it back. But then some of it else also where you have to get like a screwdriver and try to move things around, actually try to fix it. So, so lots gonna, of different minds out there working hard. As we have a few more friends logging into the Kahoot. This is Bystrack, what's something you've had to fix? Maybe they're at the hydro station. Ooh, the hydro station. I think one thing, yeah, oh gosh. I'm looking around my room here. I mean, one thing is just like some of you kind of getting those connections, right? So a lot of like when I have to put my uh, computer up to the screens and things, sometimes things don't work well. And so maybe something got unplugged. So I have to go back and look at all of the equipment and see like, uh oh, did something get unplugged and kind of troubleshoot there. Um, I think as far as maintenance, not just fixing it, but like double checking to make sure things are secure. I'm always kind of checking like the doors to make sure they stay open um, so people don't get hurt. Every so often I'll see like a random screw that comes from the bottom of our tables and I'm like, oh no, how did that fall out? And so I'll have to go and fix it and put it back in so that nothing, <laughs> nothing moves when our students come in the classroom. So. I noticed th those were two kind of categories or patterns with a lot of our responses was either electronics or things like around the house. Yeah. Or around, you know, your workspace. So I, I know I definitely end up fixing a lot of things at home and a lot of toys too. <laughs> oh, toys. Yes, yes, yes. Where one minute it's working, the next minute it's not. And then you put fresh batteries in and it's still not working. And then you really have to troubleshoot and figure out you know, those machines and how they work. And it's kind of neat to problem solve though and see the inner workings of those. It is. I think, speaking of what's working, I think our Kahoot game is ready to go. All right, let's go ahead and get started with this Kahoot. So this is our Kahoot water plus wheel equals power. So hopefully we're listening, paying close attention. Question number one. Looking at these or looking at these different choices, which item does not need electricity? So which item does not need electricity? Is it red triangle, a computer? Is it orange circle, a television? Is it blue diamond, a bicycle or a bike? Or is it green square, a phone? So which one does not use electricity? This could be kind of a trick question now that I think about some of these things here and some of our new technology and also thinking about our old technology. But of these four devices or machines here, which one does not use electricity? You have a couple more seconds to get those answers in. Was it a computer, a television, a bike, or a phone? Uh, let's see how we responded today. 
Uh, so most of you said a bike does not need electricity, but then it made me think about all those new e-bikes and things like that. But for most purposes, bicycles do not need electricity. And I was thinking about old phones. I guess those didn't need electricity, but since we're all used to these new iPhones and different gadgets, uh, it looks like we need electricity now for those phones. Let's go ahead and go to our next question on our scoreboard. It looks like we have eager felt Falcon in the lead. Let's go to our second question, which is what is another term for hydropower? So what is another term or word for hydropower? Is it red triangle, a dam? Is it orange circle, hydroelectricity? Is it blue diamond, a water wheel? Or green square, a water pump? So thinking about today's lesson, what is another term for the word or term for hydropower? Is it red triangle, a dam? Is it orange circle, hydroelectricity? Is it blue diamond, a water wheel? Or green square, a water pump? A couple more seconds to get those answers. We have lots of friends still kind of joining in. Few more seconds. Another term for hydropower. What would that be? Let's go ahead and check our answers here. Yes, so this is um, hydroelectricity is another word for hydropower. The water wheel is what would help make that water, um, hydropower. So with that, looks like we have, uh, we're going to move to our next one. Let's check out our scoreboard and let's see who's in the lead here. Looks like Tropical Wolf just took the lead. So let's go ahead and go to our third question here. Our third question goes with our career piece today. So you worked as a certain career or took on that role today. So a blank fixes equipment in a hydroelectric plant. So a blank fixes equipment in a hydroelectric plant. They also maintain it as well, right? So is it red triangle, an electrician? Is it orange circle, a water treatment plant operator? Is it blue diamond, a plant maintenance technician? Or is it green square, a plumber? So we highlighted a specific career today, even though all of these different careers entail fixing and maintaining things, which one was the one we highlighted today who fixes equipment in a hydroelectric plant? Is it an electrician, water treatment plant operator, a plant maintenance technician, or a plumber? Let's check out those answers here. Ah, so again, we were kind of divided. So I think you have the same kind of thinking of me is that a lot of these different careers entail fixing things, maintaining things. But today we highlighted that plant maintenance technician. So that's what I was looking for. Let's go ahead and go to our fourth question here. Uh, awesome Griffin just took the lead. Let's go ahead and go into our fourth question here. So running water is a form of blank energy. So you might remember these uh, words from Mrs. Hughes' different presentations. And so running water is a form of, is it geothermal energy? Is running water a form of kinetic energy? Is running water a form of solar energy? Or is running water a form of mechanical energy? energy. So we have lots of different types of energy. You may have caught the word in a video that we watched about hydroelectricity. So running water is a form of, is it red triangle geo geothermal energy? Is it kinetic energy? Is it blue diamond solar energy? Or is it green square mechanical energy? Couple seconds to get those answers in. We have lots of answers in. Uh, again, we're kind of split on some of these answers, but for today, that running water was a form of kinetic energy. It's that motion of water that is going to make something else move or have energy. So it was kinetic energy. Looks like we're stumping some of our friends out there. So let's go ahead and go to our final 
final question here. Ah, I like how our scoreboard keeps changing. So we have Dandy Yeti in the lead. Final question here. The straws in this picture works as a or an. So the straws in this picture represented a piece of machinery. Did it represent, does it represent the wheel? Does it represent the blade or blades? Does it represent paddles? Or do those straws represent an axle? So the straws in the picture where that arrow is pointing to represented a certain piece of the machinery which these plant maintenance technicians usually know all the terms and names for different things. And so was it, were those straws used as a wheel, the blade, the paddle, or was it an axle? I see those answers coming in very quickly. Looks like you guys knew this as plant maintenance technicians or problem solvers who like to fix things. You already learned some of these part names. So again, couple more seconds. The straws worked as what in the picture? Ah, so we have many of you with that answer. So the straws today were used as an axle. So they held that wheel that had the paddle or the blades on it. That axle was across that center area and that held that wheel on in place so that it could turn. Awesome, awesome. Let's go ahead and check out our winner podium here. And so in third place, we have Awesome Griffin. In second place today, we have Red Crab. And in third place, I mean, first place, sorry about that. In first place, we have, ah, Dandy Yeti kept the lead there. Nice job, nice job. So with that, you're probably going to be testing your water wheels here pretty soon. Thank you for joining in on that Kahoot. Now, if you enjoyed today's event, subscribe to our YouTube channel at CVESD Innovation and Instruction. There you'll find a collection of our previously recorded projects. Now, I hope in two weeks, right before you're about to go on break, I hope you have a chance to join my friend Coach Ramirez on December 16th as he presents Scoop Ball for All. So we know he always presents something fun. Usually it's some kind of game or fun activity that we can move around to. So join Coach Ramirez on December 16th. So thanks for joining us, friends. I hope you all have a safe and healthy weekend. Have a great one. Enjoy testing those water wheels.